So the next electro box we're going to look at is the relay box. Okay, so we have a box here that's full of um, of relays. Uh, it's got three relays. We see here's our first relay, here's our second relay, and here's our third relay. And each relay controls a bank of contacts that we have along here, as we can see. So this relay controls that bank, and we followed the lash line for this bank of uh, contacts, and the relay third relay finally controls this bank of contacts and again following our black lines is going to tell us a lot about the connections of these contacts and how we can make our way through this box like all other ones we have a power supply um, that we can join in up here to give power to the box um, or we can take uh, then we can take power from we don't have a full bank across the top like we do in other boxes but once we give power here we can again plug in on top of um, the same plug um, I'll just show you that really quickly so all these plugs can be plugged in again on top uh, so we can constantly keep going into here for power supply or indeed once one has power supply this one will have power supply as well and we've got our ground which is connected across down the bottom here this shows the line connecting it um, but up the top it doesn't show them being connected but the power supplies um, that port is connected Okay, now we're going to assume we all know the basis of what a relay is. We would have discussed that in class. Um, and for the purpose of this, you know, the in-depth, we're not going to go into an in-depth discussion. But basically, we can keep our, uh, we can imagine our relays as switches. Okay, so if for each sort of section of the relay, okay, so as I said, this relay controls this bank. And then we've got one, two, three, four switching contacts that we can use. And within each of those switching contacts, we have three ports that we can plug into. Okay, so there's for one, those are the three for one, there's three for another, there's three for another, and there's three for the fourth and final one. Okay, and in on these contacts, you'll see you can either wire it as a normally closed, so that would be using ports 12 and 11, or a normally open using ports 11 and 14. And you can do that the same across the way. So they can either be wired normally open or normally closed. And what happens when you get power to the relay, the relay light will go on and the contacts will switch. Okay, so um, instead of being joined from ports 12 and 11, when we get power, ports 14 and 11 will join. So kind of like the switch, those arrows will swing across. Um, and depending on the scenario that we have wired up, um, we will be able to do that switching um, motion. Okay. Uh, for these relays, they aren't uh, polarized, but you do need to give um, power to one side and then ground it out the other side to get the light. So let's just look at that happening. Again, I'll usually just connect across my power from my 24. So it's going into this input switch box and then over here. And if we want to see it, we'll wire it up with a switch, okay? So we'll do our usual scenario. We'll bring power down to um, a normally open switch. We'll come out of the normally open switch. So we're coming out of the normally open switch. And we'll come into the relay, into the top of the relay. And then we'll come out of the relay and into ground, okay? Um, so you'll see I'm just using a double jack here so that's coming out of the relay and down to ground and then we're just grinding out our whole scenario there so now when we activate the switch we will see the light of the relay coming on so that relay is now activated and all these contacts will have changed position so that see the little um, directional arrow now 11 and 14 will be connected together Okay, and to see that happening, let's just bring in um, our output box here. Okay, what we're going to do, um, we are going to take, we're going to join our power as usual. Okay, just to bring power across the board. And we're going to bring in our zero volts. Bring that across. And what we want to do um actually we don't even have to do that because what will happen is we will take an output from 11 11 will go across to here 
and then we connect 14 into our 24 we will get our light okay so let's just explain what hap what's happening here again so all I've done is we've connected the power across and we've got power along the top rails okay apart from the top rail here because we didn't need to then what we're saying is we're bringing 24 supply down into the top of the switch and uh, normally open switch so once that switch gets operated we will then get power into this line which will come over into our relay and our relay is getting grounded out so we have a closed loop once we close that switch and the relay will come on what we're doing with the contacts of the relay is we have got um, contact number 14 so a normally open contact is being connected into 24 volts and then the other end of the normally opened um, the 11 is going into our output over here which is our, our light and then that is getting grounded out so we have another closed loop there so you'll see once we operate the switch the relay contacts will have crossed over so now the connection will be between 11 and 14 and the light will come on Okay, turn that off we'll see it happening if we set it up as normally closed the light will start on and then indeed when we operate it like we said this line will have joined 11 and 14 so 11 and 12 are no longer connected so that's why the light has gone out and it may seem a little bit trivial um, as to why we'd go through the hassle of bringing in a relay to do that but ultimately what we have here is we've got we've got two isolated circuits um, that is being controlled by a switch okay so one circuit is controlling another separately isolated circuit and they're being isolated through this relay so that's kind of foundation um, understanding of the relay um, and that can be very powerful when we go into um, looking for latching and um, we will do some latching down here on the circuits to latch signals on we'll use need to use relays to do that um, and indeed then when we go to do PLCs you know PLCs contains a number of, of relays inside of it um, and we will be replacing this box then with a PLC and we'll be able to program those kind of relays to make an action happen um, so it's just it may seem a little bit trivial at the moment as to why we're including this box but as we build up to more complicated examples it will hopefully make a bit more sense so that's how you use um, the relay box um, for the kind of intro to electro pneumatics so um, hopefully you enjoyed this video